Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Collider Video and our special Mission Impossible Rogue Nation spoilers review. This is a spoilers review, which means we are going to give everything in the way in the movie. These reviews, our spoiler reviews, are meant for those of us who have seen the film and we just want to hang out and talk about the film together. If you have not seen Mission Impossible Rogue Nation yet and you're just looking for a regular review, look in our YouTube page. We've got a regular review there, but this is our full-blown spoilers review. You've been warned. All right, so joining me for this spoiler, we got a full table today. Sitting over there, Mr. John Schnepp. It's weird how they killed Simon Pegg. Spoiler! <laughs> uh, just kidding, it didn't happen. The only guy not wearing a black shirt today, <laughs> standing out, being unique, expressing his creative Joel voice. Joel Silver. No, Mark this, Ellis. Is, this is my Tom Cruise on a motorcycle in Rogue Nation look. <laughs> I thought you were busting out the Rob Schneider, the <laughs> animal look. Or the care, whatever it is. Mm. Sitting over here, Mr. Christian Harloff. I got nothing to say. <laughs> And Mr. Dennis Zen. They, they unchained me from the editing machine so I could actually wander about today. <laughs> One day a month, yes. we let him away from the editing <laughs> machine. Okay, guys, so we're talking about uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. A bunch of us saw it Monday. You actually are fresh off the boat. Fresh. You just saw it last night. In IMAX. In IMAX, which I'm actually a little bit jealous of because this is one of those films I would love to see in either like a, a Prime or an IMAX kind of screening experience. But anyway, so we're going to talk about some of the things we liked about the film. We're going to talk about some things that maybe could have been better about the film. We're going to give our overall impressions and all that kind of stuff. We're going to go right into it. Dennis, let's go over there. Let's start with you. You saw it with me. Your general thoughts and some of the things that stood out to you as being really positive about Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Well, I thought it was fantastic. Just from the opening sequence, they, they show uh, that the thing they've been publicizing a lot is this Tom Cruise hanging around. It's right here, the hanging from the side of the plane, yeah. which he did in real life. It's not CG. It's not green screen. There are still people who don't under realize that. That's not a visual <laughs> effects shot. Yeah. They actually harnessed him into the side of this giant plane and took off and land. We've heard anywhere between five and 12 times. I heard, eight, took, I heard eight, eight times. times. Yeah. I heard eight, eight, eight times. five, 12. It doesn't matter. It doesn't like matter. the first time you One do it and enough. you land and yeah. the director's like, hey, we didn't quite get that. We right. need to do it again. Yeah. You're like, what the hell? They did that like five times. That's incredible. Except it was Tom Cruise probably saying that. Hey guys, right. we've only done this two times. Can we do it right. another nine times? <laughs> I, Wait, that's just again. crazy. Yeah, to me. And, and for me, that's like, it kind of sets the table for the whole movie because they're saying, hey, here's the thing that we've been promoting a lot in our trailers and everyone's talking about it. We're going to put it out first so now there's like if it doesn't go ramp up from there you're going to get disappointment right? right but it does ramp up and you have all those action sequences like the underwater breathing scene the car chases uh the ending fights the even the fight at the opera was pretty yeah. pretty yeah. cool oh so creatively the, done the pacing of this movie it was really good because you never felt like it was over like it didn't have so much action where you just got kind of overrun with it, but at the same time you never got felt slow. And then at least for me, it's probably the most memorable, not that it's like a, a brilliant, like deep story, but it, it was the most engaging in terms of what the movie was about. I'll probably remember this storyline more than any of the other Mission Impossible ones because I can't remember any of those. Yeah, and, and I find the... Um, the editing of the movie was actually really well done. It was very punchy. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, this editor, Eddie Hamilton, he, he had uh, edited uh, Kick-Ass, Kingsman, and all that stuff. He, he was able to, not just with the action, but with the humor as well, he was able to like hold on for like a pause or a beat that, that actually made the difference whether a scene was funny or not. Right. Yeah. Christian, what about you? I agree with a lot what Dennis just said there. Is, and I, for me, is, and I love Ghost Protocol. I love Ghost Protocol. But and I've said it even in our regular review that that Dubai scene, once you're done four, with that scene, yeah. you just kind of go, whew, and it's hard to go anywhere from there. And by doing the plane scene right away, like you said, it does make you go, okay, what are you guys yeah. going to do next? But they tell you, well, we're going to tell you a story next. Yeah. That's the big thing that you guys are going to enjoy. Yeah, you heard that he did that. There you go. You enjoy it. We did some big moves. We'll do some more big moves. But this is what this movie is about. It's a story. And you're, I agree with you, Dennis, 100%. This is the story that I remember the most because they developed the team the most. They gave Simon Pegg a lot to do. But I loved uh, the relationship with the girl because she mm. stood out to me like that knife scene when she jumps up on the guy's shoulder, yeah. stabs him in the chest. <laughs> um, she's another badass. We've gotten this with Emily Blunt and Scarlett Johansson and now I believe this. And help me with Rebecca Ferguson. Rebecca I believe Ferguson. 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 I'm not going to forget her name Again. much longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, much, longer. <laughs> much longer because she was a standout and her relationship at times I'm going, okay, well, that's going to be a predictable thing. And then they give you a nice little spin and then why she's doing and working for British intelligence and then that whole scene, my favorite part of the whole movie is not even the action stuff. It was the scene with Alec Baldwin and Jeremy Renner when 
when they trick the yeah uh, the, the, the the English the prime, security minister, dude right? yeah. and, and they and they and they trick all everything going on there and they have this whole conversation with the prime minister and how they're getting their information and it it tied in that classic feel of Mission Impossible and some of the things that Mission Impossible one did. The entire movie didn't seem like the old TV show as where this movie did, and that was one of the moments to me. I went, okay, this is a Mission Impossible movie. This is the team dynamic and what they did with Simon Pegg, the humor that Simon Pegg is able to do to where it's not just comic relief. He's a character. That's who he is. I never felt like, oh, that's just Simon Pegg telling jokes. No, that's who the character was. It was developed. The relationship with him and Ethan I thought was great, and I loved the ending with Alec Baldwin joining Yes. Uh, the mm -hmm. team. Oh, great ending. Uh, so he's the I, secretary. Yeah. He's the secretary. And, that, that, and because what they've done every movie, uh, well, at least since the third one, is add new team members that we're going to enjoy in the next installment. So yeah. the question of, like, what are they going to do in the next one? Well, they're going to add this new team. Like, Jeremy Renner joined in three. Right. Um, and by the way, J.J. Abrams and crew should be given a lot of credit They've pretty much done what Fast and Furious did with Fast and Furious 4, I believe, is where they kind of spun the genre on its head. Yeah. And they changed it up because 2 was was not good. And you're like, okay, this is what this is turning into. And J.J. Abrams introduced this new crew, and I thought they did that well in this one. One of the things that really stood out to me, well, first of all, from the beginning of the film, why I love the beginning so much with that Tom Cruise scene was that this is the scene that they have been, there he is, right, right there. You know, <laughs> you know. Anyway, I'm crushing our he's so little. Um, but the thing that I, not only they have been inundating us in all the marketing with that shot, and well, they should. It is a money shot. But what they did by putting that right at the beginning of the movie, what it did for me was when I'm sitting in a movie and I've seen the trailers with the big money shots, you're sitting there kind of waiting for that moment to come because you know that's still coming. Once that happened right off the bat, I'm like, I now have no idea where this movie's going. I have no idea what's next because that's the only shot I remember yeah. from the trailers. It's like, yeah, there's the uh, some some random shots of fighting and action, but whatever. This is the shot we remember, and it happens right away. So I'm like, I, I'm actually sitting in a movie theater, and I have no idea what's coming next, and that was really fun. The other thing is that I thought they nailed really, really well, which I find most movies that try to do this fail, at least with me when they try to keep you guessing about a character. Nine times out of 10, we can all kind of guess right away. Okay, this character is actually the good guy. This. I thought they did a great job with Rebecca Ferguson yeah. about keeping us guessing. Yeah. They And they made sure they think, okay, now we're going to throw you something that makes you think she's good. Now we're going to throw you something that makes you think she's bad. Now another thing, and now another thing. And it, it just kept you going that it, finally, it took me till we got about halfway through the third act that I finally felt comfortable. Okay, she's a good guy who's getting played. But they, they had me going back and forth in that. And when a movie like this that's so fun with the action, can also mentally keep you guessing. Yeah. That's a rare blend in a lot of this stuff. And you're right, Simon Pegg was great. I loved, might be my favorite scene in the movie. It's a very simple scene. It won't be anybody else's favorite. When Ving Rhames first shows up. That was great. And that helicopter. Yeah. And he's like, just to be clear, Ethan's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, and then he just kind of tilts his head. Like, yeah. Holy crap, all these years, and he's still that yeah. intimidating. Well, it's yeah. good so for awesome. nostalgia purposes because he's one of the, one of the original crew. Since the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so it was great to have him in there. The action was great. It was funny when it needed to be funny. Tom Cruise is getting better and better and better. We already know, look, he's an Academy Award nominated pure actor, but he's not a great actor who can also do action. He is, I think we can now proclaim him a legitimate, he's an action star. Absolutely. You know, he's not, no, like it used to be just The Rock and Jason Statham out there. <laughs> Tom Cruise is a legit action star now. And, you know, between last year's Live, Die, Repeat, Forever, Tomorrow, where, <laughs> wherever the name of the movie is, and this one now, I just, I thoroughly enjoyed it. it became my, I, I didn't think it was possible after seeing Ghost Protocol that another Mission Impossible film would top it for me. I thought, just come close to it and you'll be doing good. Right. This topped it for me. It's now my favorite ever. Anyway, Mark, what about you? Tom Cruise is an action star. And if I was an insurance agent, he'd be my least favorite client because <laughs> every one of the stunts that he does manages to top itself. You guys today on Movie Talk, we're talking about your favorite Mission Impossible films. In my head, I'm trying to rank the stunts that he pulls off in these movies and which one I would least like to attempt. The building <laughs> scene had it for a while. Then I saw the airplane scene. And then I saw the underwater scene. Then I saw the motorcycle scene. All the other action sequences in this, particularly the motorcycle chase was wait, wait, I gotta ask, did to watch. He, did he do the motorcycles? Yeah. I'm sure he oh, loves yeah. motorcycles. He did the motorcycle stunts? I heard, yeah. I, th yeah. I heard that he did, yeah. 
Okay, I, I didn't even know and that. And look at Come the picture. Impressed. Everybody else in that sequence had a helmet on except Tom Cruise. He's wearing <laughs> my shirt and sunglasses. That's his protection, kids. When he's underwater, he's really in an underwater tank holding his breath for as long as he can until they yell cut. That was such a fun sequence, too, because you knew something was going to go wrong right. in that underwater sequence. Totally. You knew something was going to happen, and you were on the edge of your seat waiting for it, and then this huge bar comes around. Totally caught me by surprise. Didn't see and it coming. The whole totally theater the whole goes, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Grab yeah. it. Yeah. Because that's like, something you would expect to happen to somebody like a Simon Pegg or a Jeremy Renner where they just get the discs knocked out of their hands. But that doesn't happen to Ethan Hunt. It did, and he somehow managed to recover with the help of Rebecca Ferguson. Simon Pegg walking through that security at yeah. the same time. Oh, the way so that good. they splice those two scenes together. That's what I love about Mission Impossible movies is that there's a team now. And so one member has, has a task to do in this part of the world. Another team member has something to do in another part of the world. And the way that you edit those, like what Dennis pointed out, is so crucial to how much the audience is enjoying it. And I thought it was done tremendously, too. Alec Baldwin, to me, as well, he wasn't wasted. Like, sometimes the Mission Impossible yes. films have taken, like, a Tom Wilkinson and been like, all right, thanks for your day of work. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins, thanks for your day of work. I don't think since John Boy they brought in a veteran actor who could actually have something to contribute to the story, like what Baldwin did, but he wasn't trying to be too funny. He was actually the straight man in a lot of these, too, as was Jeremy Renner. It's all the crazy action that was happening. I had so much fun with this movie. And, and when you play the straight man, like he was, Mm -hmm. then it allows because if they're trying to pepper him in being funny during the movie then at the end when he's sitting in front of the senate here and going yes it was all a big ruse that wouldn't have felt funny but right. because he played it straight the whole movie right. when he's in front of that senate hearing at the end it's all of a sudden hilarious anyway snap you're impressed you just saw it yeah, last night i absolutely loved it i cannot wait to see it again it was so much fun uh, I had to say that like earlier today, I was like, it made me forget about James Bond. It made me forget about Jason Bourne. This is like, for me now, my favorite franchise. Like that's a rejuvenated, like since Ghost Protocol, it's like, I didn't even want to see Mission Impossible 3 after Mission Impossible 2. Right. I didn't see Mission Impossible 3 until like after I saw Ghost Protocol, I went back and saw Mission Impossible 3. And then it made me more excited to see this fifth one. I think this fifth one is just edges out the fourth one just a little bit because of the incredible action like you said it starts with that plane thing that plane sequence and then when you see the the guy with the gun and he's like he shrugs and then goes right to the credits you're like yeah. the audience i was with we all cheered we were like yeah. yeah like what a great way to start a film and you're like starting on such a high a high point and it just keeps going it ratchets up i thought the villain that they had in this oh, series yeah, oh, yeah. was yeah. one of the most Solomon incredible Lane. yeah one, one of the most incredible, frightening, and creepy villains I've seen in any of these spy films, like any James Bond film, except for maybe Blofeld. This guy, uh, mm -hmm. he's a great actor. He's been in a ton of other films. This one, he emanated just nothing but creepiness, especially when Simon Pegg is tied up and he like leans in on him. He was creepier than that weird dude, the bone breaker guy, which, which I was very happy that he was taken out by Rebecca Ferguson, because yes, normally that's yeah. a sequence that would have been for Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Instead, they gave it to her and yeah. she showed what a badass she was. It was a, an amazing fight scene and it was fantastically, like I gotta say, Chris McQuarrie directed the shit out of this film. This film is so well directed. I mean, there was a, just one moment when, when uh, I think it was the, um, right before they were like going to that ballroom where the camera's kind of rotating around and we're like introducing all the different characters and we're setting everything up and you know, the gal comes in with a, the yellow dress and that's the only other sequence that I remembered from the trailer is like her in that yellow dress flipping around and doing like that kind of Black Widow crazy super move, you know? I thought all of the action sequences were, were just fantastic. Everything flowed together. It was like scene by scene by scene. The humor elements, Ving Rhames, just everybody in it was so much fun to watch. I just, it was an, an incredible entertainment an enjoyable movie experience for me. I you forgot know? about the scene at the opera too, that, yeah. which is another great like tension building scene where you have two guys and it looks like 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 her and this other guy right. are both trying to make the same assassination attempt and Ethan Hunt doesn't want that to happen. He's looking at her. He's wondering who this person is while you, the audience, are wondering the same exact thing. And so, right after she has saved him too. Yeah, right. it, was, yes. it was a great yeah. job of putting us in the mindset right. of Ethan Hunt. Like various times in this movie, you got to play the role of different characters on screen and I love the way that that movie did that. Well, you I, know, and you had mentioned as far as the villain goes, 
what I loved about the the villain role here is, and I you know, I might have been talking to you about this, and this might be one of the things you don't like uh, in it, but I think that it was, you were talking about maybe there should have been you wanted to see a fight between the villain and Tom Cruise at the end. Maybe? I, I, I think yeah, I think I mean so that's one of the things I would have liked to have seen. Um, and I and you're not the only person I heard say that, but for me, what I liked about it, um, it was a cat and mouse game mm-hmm. from the beginning with these two, and I and it was kind of a theme yeah. that they were going through, like even when Jeremy Renner says it's just about you wanting to beat this guy, and you think that's you think that's what this is about. It's, it, it, and it was about the team. It was about everything else. But yes, in the same way, he's got to mentally beat this guy. It's not and he just did about, it the same way. It's like, yeah. that's right, son. It's, Gas him. It's not know? just it blowing exactly things up. I'm going to save my friend first because yeah. that scene with the bomb was yeah. great. Oh, Getting well him done. out of there and then having the creepy villain talk through Simon Pegg was awesome. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, now I'm going to have you chase me down and I'm going to stick you in a glass box. Although maybe if he wanted to, he probably could have shot himself in the head and got himself out of there. I was worried about that. But, but the reason why he didn't is maybe that means he's going to come back eventually down the line. You know, you raise a great point because that is one of. The, I wasn't really bothered by it. I just remember walking and thinking, oh, I thought, I think I might have felt a little bit more satisfied if Ethan Hunt and the villain could have had that fight at the end. But you raise an excellent point, which completely changed my mind on that. The whole thing was a mental chess match between them. It was the villain staying two steps ahead of Ethan mentally. Right from the beginning, when he shoots that girl in the record store. That was all just to get Ethan to want to chase right. him because mm-hmm. I want mm-hmm. you eventually to steal those things out of that underwater dunk tank that I don't want to go into myself to get. I mean, he was always two steps ahead. And so now you raise a great point. He ultimately beats him at the end by outsmarting him. Right. Yeah. And so you raise a great point. And you're right. That opera house scene, the cinematography of that whole sequence yeah. in the movie. The music. And the way yeah. they threw the music back in throughout the movie. Yes. Right? Like the under, yeah. Undertone, like in a score, was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's just the, 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 the way sometimes, look, a lot of people think, oh, just sweeping cameras, that makes great music. No, he, they chose right. when, when to, to sweep that. in camera, yeah. when to have an elevating camera, when to have a totally still shot, the angles they chose. They just, they told the story in that opera house visually. And it was breathtaking. You felt the scope of it and all that kind of stuff. And also, I also, it had a little bit of noises off that scene to me because <laughs> when there's several moving pieces at once, and I didn't mean that literally, no pun intended, but you know, Simon Pegg is hitting this lever. Right. It makes this thing elevate. Ethan's now mm-hmm. on a different level and trying to fight that guy. Just so well thought out. Just such a well thought out film. Okay, we've been gushing about the film. Schnepp, let's start on your side of the table this time. What are some of the things that maybe, no movie is a perfect movie. What are some of the things you thought maybe, uh, Ghost, not Ghost Protocol, I'm sorry, what Rogue Nation could have done maybe a bit better? Boy, it's so, you know, I mean, I, I give this like a 98 out of 100. I mean, it's like, it is a almost perfect action film for me. I guess maybe one or two things for me, if I was going to nitpick, I could say a little bit uh, more of Alec Baldwin and mm. the Lane character could have. I could have used a little bit more setup with him, the the the, the British bad guy and the the actual main bad guy because they were like they were in it, but they were almost not in it enough. Right. But on a very small like when I say enough, I mean like maybe one more scene. But I have almost like I said that's it. I don't really have any nitpicks. It, to me, it was like a perfectly well paced film, an incredible action movie a great adventure it had so many comedic moments that you were laughing and then enjoying just when they were they you know when uh when they the ving rames and jeremy renner and they meet up and they just have that look yeah. for a second <laughs> yeah. and then they yeah. take off again i mean yeah well done. every scene that ving rames was in was a pleasant surprise because i think he was very underutilized since episode one since mission impossible one and in this one they kind of brought him back in as like no we need this guy for these reasons you yeah know? What about you, Mark? What could they have done better? I mean, you could have had Rebecca Ferguson hang outside the plane. Like, that would have been a fun <laughs> sequence. Uh, it, it, I echo Schnapp's sentiments. I think that the, the critic in me will say that maybe it was a little too long. You could have shaved about 10 or 15 minutes off of it, but the fan in me wanted this movie to keep going. Like, I could have used three more hours of these incredible action set pieces and the humor in between. Jeremy Renner could have had a little more to do, I think. he I think he runs fast in one scene, and that's pretty much all the action he has. When he's proven he can, he's very capable of handling action. I I liked how much everyone else had to do. I liked that they sprinkled in Luther and Alec Baldwin, Simon Pegg having as big a role as he did. I thought he crushed that. Um, but so yeah, I mean everything else. And and like you said, Tom Cruise. It's like there's nothing that you can ask of this guy that he won't do. So it's a it's a near perfect action movie to me as well. Yeah, I I will agree with you. I thought maybe the film could have been tightened up a little bit, but instead of like fit, I'm thinking maybe six minutes, seven minutes might have been able been trimmed off here and there. But that's nitpicking. The other thing, my one. One key uh, problem that I had with him, it's not really a problem, it's just something I think they could have done a little bit better on. 
I never really bought into, nor did they really do a good enough job explaining what's the point of the syndicate, really. Okay, I get it. They want to cause mayhem. Okay, well, that's that's a, maybe that's okay for a comic book movie. That doesn't quite cut it here. Like, he is amassed, like, he obviously they've been in operation for years and years amassing some of the best agents from around the world who are all apparently were evil to start with. I guess. Um, so, but what ulti- what's the end game for the syndicate? They didn't do enough, I thought, to really explain. And I think if they did a better job at really painting that picture, we would have felt the threat that Ethan felt when he said, "Do you think that this was that that's what this is about? That's just about me." About like because honestly, in that scene, there was a little part of me of. Yeah, Ethan, that is what this is about because I don't really feel the global terror that's happening here. But other than that, I literally have nothing else I could point at. Like this, this movie is so thoroughly enjoyable, wonderfully paced, great, beautifully shot, wonderful performances, really utilized the characters, had a nice balance. I never felt like they spent way too much time on this and not enough time on that. It was just fabulous action film. Okay, what about you? Well, my negatives are kind of a hodgepodge of all your guys' things. As you have, uh, as far as I agree, I'd like to see maybe a little bit more of Alec Baldwin uh, set, setting that up a little bit, although it crosses into what Mark said because sure. if you put another scene in there, there's some, my other gripe is that it's probably like 10 minutes too long. Right. Um, I also would like to see, I think, Jeremy Renner, even though, and that's the thing, is that I, maybe a little more Jeremy Renner, but then again, for what his role is in this movie, it actually serves his purpose to only be behind the scenes right. and then get involved when he's yeah. supposed to. So it's, He's playing the role that Alec Baldwin will play later. Yes, yeah. it's kind of yeah. Conflicting, but I, I will say that one of the things that I probably would have seen, I'd like to see in a little more was, uh, and I did some of this, was tying it into the other two movies, three and four, because they did it a little bit with when they showed uh, the Kremlin, which I thought was interesting. That but was great. Yeah, there was right. no <laughs> before yeah. and after. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. That was really funny. I would have liked to have him mention what happened to Paula Patton. Um, yes. you know, yeah. or his girl, his uh, wife. Monaghan, That's the yeah. main, that right. was the main thing for That's me. That's why yeah. I was glad he'd never hooked up right. with her because he, remember, guys, he He's still married. has a wife. So that, well, yeah. that, and that was it because in the, because even in the fourth one, even though she had no part, there was still reference like, well, she's still there because yeah. she was so she was such a huge part of three. Right. And she is there at the end. At the end. She, at the end. Of she's, yeah, at the end of the four. four. She yeah. Right. That's what I'm four, saying. Yeah. So like in, in three, she's a big part. And then four, she shows up at the end and five, she's ghost. You don't even hear about her. Yeah, so. you, you can't tell me he didn't hook up with Rebecca Ferguson's character five minutes after this movie. So, right. I <laughs> of mean, course like, he did. Yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> honey, she saved me in the water. Give me yeah. a break. Right? <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so, but, but that's, uh, that's, that's it. Pass. That's it. Yeah, that I, sort of I, like I don't have any major issues with it. They're all minor. Again, yeah, Jeremy Renner could have been in more. Ving Rhames could have been in more. But there's nothing like outstanding. I mean, the one thing, it's not even for me. I could see someone watching this movie and maybe if they don't want to buy into the like suspend their disbelief you know like the whole thing of like they lock this like secret thing inside this th- uh, underwater thing you know like it's like yeah. uh, who get, designed this yeah exactly <laughs> it gets to kind of a yeah. ridiculous point but you have to you have to buy into it you have right. to buy into it from the very beginning otherwise you'll kind of be like well that's not gonna happen but but i think that's just part of the charm of the movie yeah All right, well, let's go down the table then. Just quickly, your quick summation of your thoughts of the film and a score out of 10, Schnepp. But before we do that, let me sweat out one other scene. I was really happy that they they were able to add that sequence with Simon Pegg putting on the mask. Oh, yes. And then they went through all the motions and, oh, that won't work. No mask. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But they showed all this stuff and then him getting just shocked to death or whatever. I give this a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this film. I cannot wait to see it again. I didn't mention Tom Cruise when I was talking about it. This man, yeah, like you guys said, is an, a certified action star. He is so much fun to watch. He's an incredible actor, and he's so committed to, to this role as an action hero. Like, you believe he does all these crazy stunts. He's on that bike. He's on that, you know, airplane. He's underwater. He's, he's doing all- 50. He's yeah, over 50 now. Yeah. And the man is is an incredible action star. So, I mean, just watching him and all this whole crew that they assembled to make this series, I'm happy to hear they announced like doing they're doing Mission Impossible 6. They're going to get ready to rock and I hope Chris McQuarrie is on with Drew Pierce to write the Mission Impossible 6 movie because they did a fantastic job writing this screenplay. It's incredibly well paced. There's not a moment for m- myself. I didn't feel it was too long. I forgot. I was like, "Oh yeah, this is over 2 hours." It felt perfect to me. It felt well, oh, I didn't want it to end either. It was one of those things. So I give it a, like if you want to see the action film of the summer, I mean, Mad Max is already over. That's still in my top, you know, that's my number one film so far this year. This is my number two action film of the year. So much fun. You got to see it. 
Mark. I agree with Brother Schnipp. Give Tom Cruise your money, everybody. <laughs> He's earned it. This is maybe the most fun you'll have at the movie theater all summer. And I love Jurassic World. I love Ant-Man. This is why I go to the movies multiple times. Mm. There's so many action scenes in here that I know I didn't get quite the complete picture of because there's so much stuff going on screen. So I need to go see this movie again just to help digest it a little bit more. This is everything that you want when you go to see a movie. Get a huge thing of popcorn. Make sure it's a free refill. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation will not disappoint you. Not Nine out of ten for me. Yeah, I had such a good time. So pleasantly surprised. Was not expecting another Mission Impossible film to outshine four. For me personally, it did. I do think it's the best action film we've had this summer. I put this above Mad Max. Mad Max might have had a couple of key set pieces that were like, okay, wait, you can't doubt that. But overall, as a, mm. as a film in its entirety, I think this one outshines Mad Max for me. It might be my favorite movie this summer. I'm still torn between it and Ant-Man a little bit, but they're two very different movies. You will not regret the choice to spend your evening going to watch Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. For me, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'll also give it a 9 out of 10, and I think this is my favorite movie of the summer. I can, I'm confident enough to say that I, after put, looking at all of them, too, I agree that Mad Max is a great, great film. Um, I just think that this one overall does the whole package in regards to the story and the characters and, and continuing a franchise that by the fifth movie could get dull. This movie continues. You know, Mad Max is where it's the ultimately is kind of the yeah. first in a new right. in a new generation. Um, but this movie just does everything that I wanted it to do and move over Liam Neeson. You're no longer the old man champion of, uh, hey. of action. <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise is the guy and he still is running around and you still believe he's 25 years old is yeah. where Liam Neeson can't cheat with that run. Tom Cruise can. Tom uh, Cruise is a lot faster than Liam Neeson. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is. This is yeah. just an overall, like Mark said, this is why you go to the movies. This is why you want to shove popcorn in your face, but you also want to be engaged in what you're watching. You're on the edge of your seat. You're rooting for your characters. You are there. You're in it. You're. It, it's clever. It's smart. It has good villains. It has a good It, it has a good maybe villain. It turns out to be a her, her, uh, heroine in uh, Rebecca Ferguson. So, I mean, it, there's... It's it's a great great film, and if you haven't checked it out and you're hesitant, please. I hopefully you value our opinions and you go check this out. Dennis, I'm gonna also give it a nine out of ten. I'm with Schnepp though. I still have Mad Max in terms of entertainment value. I still have Mad Max a little bit above it, but this is definitely my second one. I, I, I it was greatly paced. All the action sequences, all the characters memorable. That the story is engaging, especially for a kind of like a popcorn flick. And then I hope they do bring back the same team: Christopher McQuarrie directing and writing, uh, Robert Elswait uh, did the cinematography and then uh, the editor, Eddie Hamilton, bring that whole crew back together and, and let's do it again next week, next one of the summer. Things that this movie, summers, right? One of the things this movie does for me is that it really makes me want to see Cruz and McQuarrie get back together again and do Jack Reacher too. I I'm, I really liked what they did together in Jack Reacher. I know you had a little bit of a Jai Courtney issue with it. No, it was a Three Stooges scene in the tub. Oh, okay. I kind of yeah. got a kick in the. Yeah. I, like, I, like I, I like that. I like. I like. I, I like so that, and I like Jack Reacher. I, I See, thought that was, I was a good. I actually good maybe like this movie. I was so impressed by this movie even more because I didn't like Jack Reacher, and I'm like, how are these guys going to follow what Ghost Protocol did? And they did it magnificently. Yeah. So ultimately, hey guys, really, we want to know too. What did you think of Mission Impossible? Rogue Nation. Make sure you jump into the comments section of this video and leave us your thoughts. We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. What did we miss? What did you really like that we say? Let us know in the comments section. So that'll do it for this installment. I want to thank the guys doing this little review with us. I'm going to start on this side of the table. Mr. Dennis Zen. Dennis, where can people find you online? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Mr. Christian Harloff. Both Twitter and Instagram at Christian Harloff. Over here, Mr. Mark Ellis. You can find me at H&M, returning this shirt, and then <laughs> online at 5150 Ellis, Twitter, and Instagram. And Mr. John Schnepp. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp or at TDOSLWH. And you can find me on uh, Twitter or Facebook, just at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Make sure to join us for Mailbag this weekend, and of course, more movie talk starting on Monday. Thanks a lot for joining us. Bye-bye.